We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. Welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. We back. We back at it. Let's thank our people. Let's do it. No, I said I was ready. All right. Gabriel T, Matt W, Leslie N, Chris S, Steve J, Carol K, Ken S, Richard B, Aaron L, Matthew G, Matthew M, and Nick F. Thank you. I'm no. sure I'll find something to put. To <laughs> no, like but thank post, you guys so much. Post Malone reverb yeah. or something. Yeah, like Post Malone reverb. That'd be awesome. All right, so we're back in the studio. We were gone for a little bit. Thanks for your patience. Um, let's get right into it. Um, let's start with today was the release of the 992. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Uh, yeah. 992.2. Porsche was super excited about it. Yeah. It gave us like all of like seven minutes video that was pre recorded and it's like, here it is. I know you guys aren't excited about it either. It's a hybrid motor. We're not excited about to make it. Obviously, I have to tell you I'm excited about it because I'm required, <laughs> because I work for Porsche. Yeah. However, we are not excited about this product. And I tuned in <laughs> at like 9.08 or something our time, and I was like, oh, okay. It's probably like an hour-long thing. Yeah. And then they're like, and it was nice to show you the part. I was like, what? Yeah. So then I had to I rebound to the... Go to Porsche.com if you want to know more. The beginning <laughs> and watch some of it, and then I was like, oh. Saw the... I mean, I don't know why they went GTS and regular 9... Whatever, the cab. I yeah. I didn't understand why they would show... A brand new powertrain and then something that didn't use the brand new powertrain. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe just, I think in their minds, they probably thought like a, a comparison. Well, it's, a new, it's a new body style, I get that. I yeah, guess. maybe, maybe comparison-wise, like for people to kind of be able to like, oh, that that's the difference between the two of these. It, even if you're like yeah. new to Porsche, you know, like maybe what that's the kind of the deal. What do you think about the, the naming T-Hybrid? You know... <laughs> I don't think much about what they name stuff anymore. I just does have a turbo. I know. Um, but let's get into some of the cool things about it before we just totally undress this thing and throw it out in the street. Right. So um, I think one of the cool things about it that I thought was immediately, obviously this is for street application, but like where the electric motor is spooling that turbo based off a of throttle response. So essentially it's almost kind of like an anti lag system. Mm. Um, like old anti-lag kind of used to be that way. It didn't work with an electric motor, but it kept that turbo like boost pressure all the way up, you know, especially from rally days and all that kind of stuff. So essentially that that's what that is. But on the EV side of it, you know, there's not a spark plug, essentially fire breathing you know, fire into that thing and nonstop um, where that thing's just staying spooled. The turbo motor's doing that work, so it's more... I mean, uh, the electric motor's yeah. doing that work, keeping the turbo spooled, so I thought that was pretty cool, at so least. the sensor just decides to die. Yeah, exactly. And right. then what? Then you just have detonation, just boom. Yeah, and then you get just... Maybe you don't get any turbo spool after that no, when, mean, the, when the EV motor decides to check out. But well, see, the great thing about that is there's yeah. a service department, and they'll charge you $10,000 for that, uh, and that's a serviceable part, probably, and that's probably a part failure thing, oh, so... I'm sure. So all the service techs out there, the more complicated this car gets, the more they probably love it. The first thing I saw was that HV battery or whatever that they're doing. I was uh -huh. like, well, if the ordinary battery is already like 3Gs, yeah. what's this thing cost? Probably five times the amount. And and you're going to charge, and it's buried in the car, so it's probably an ass oh, ton I mean, of labor, right? It looks like, it looked like it was where the battery should be. I don't know if it's, that's true or not. Maybe it has an escape hatch for service, yeah. but there, it's the difference is, doesn't matter how long it really takes them out. It just reminds it what the book says. Yeah. There's five serviceable bill billable hours to remove that battery. Now there might be a trap door, and that thing can come out in thirty minutes. But it's five billable hours. Them, That's the difference. Yeah. As we all know, we've been had the book has been slapped at us before. They're like, "Hey man, don't hate on, don't hate the player, right? Like knocked out, you know, ten jobs in six hours. Build you sixty hours in one day, bro." Because I'm efficient. And we're doing well over here. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're billing $300 an hour, bro. <laughs> Crushing it, right? Or even if you're building, you know, 175 you're killing it. Yeah. But in all seriousness, um, you know, I don't want to have any disrespect towards Porsche with it, but you and I have kind of seen now, obviously, the, the, there's similarities 
basically just in visual like placement of that electric mm. motor meaning between the PDK transmission and the engine. Yep. We've seen this six, seven years ago at Vaughn. They've been doing this for a while, right? They probably bought the tech. So maybe they did. Uh, maybe they sold a portion of them to them. Um, if you're not familiar with them, they have been around for a while. And um, if you're you know, an avid you know, event goer, if you're not th- going, but I remember when they came on the scene, I think they were at Works Reunion like seven years ago, and they yeah. were displaying their brand new product at that time. They had a booth. Cold. Yeah, booth and everything. Um, yeah, and people thought they were out of their mind, and it's, it was an adaptable... The only thing it changed really is everything, your transmission was the same. Basically, this was just this unit. It went between the flywheel and the engine, and it gave you more power and it was an assist and it was a hybrid assist system. Yep. Um, a lot less compact than yeah. what Porsche has produced now and then way more power than Porsche is getting. That was the other thing I was kind of underwhelmed about. Yeah, right? I thought the same I thing too. I thought they were going to do a lot more power out of it. Well, I think there's going to be, but I think they, again, you know, they're selling products, right? So GTS is high product, but eventually they got to think, well, we're going to make a turbo and it's going to have this same system. And it's actually going to be the turbo, not the GTS with a turbo on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's actually going to be the turbo. And the Turbo S is going to go to this system eventually, do too, right? Do you think they're right? going to do uh, dual e-turbos instead of a single one for the turbo? Probably. I don't see I don't see how you would just do one. It wouldn't make yeah. sense, right? Like, the smaller the wheel of that turbo, it spools faster, too, like... You're going to get faster. That doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, like yeah. That, that's, which is the crazy part that that's going to be instead. I thought the motor size was going to be smaller. I don't know why. I, was I thought so that. too, but um, I think I think we read it maybe wrong, but I maybe they changed it on us. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was like three liter for some reason. Yeah, well, it was initially. Yeah. That's what the announcement was like a year ago. Maybe it's changed since then. I don't know. Um, what are your thoughts on? I guess this whole kind of setup. I mean, you watch the video. I watched I it too. If you haven't watched it, um, I don't know if I would say it's worth a watch, but it, it's worth a watch if you want to know what we're talking about. Let's just put it that way. Um, but we could save some of your time if you can, if you have a, you know, a vivid the imagination. TLDR. There's e turbos. There's an e motor in between the transmission. Yeah, but no, I, I just thought about like how they brought Mark Weber and Matt Watson in yeah. to do like, you know that cars wow thing like that's his thing where they do like okay. drag racing and all that kind of stuff and they kind of brought him in as a guest so if you're a kind of no the funnier part about that is Kristen was like who cares about this drag race yeah well <laughs> that, like, where's, I, where's that useful I, I i thought the same thing when i saw it i was kind of like so are we pitching these cars as drag racing cars now like is that is that was that the pitch like, because then, you know, immediately, like, my brain starts to go to track times, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, don't worry, we, we're eight seconds faster on the track, too. You know, it's like, okay, well, but I, I just thought that di- that display of, I guess, I think police officers call it demonstration of speed. Yeah. I think that's what they call that when people drag race on the street, that's even though this was yeah. a private thing. Um, the demonstration of speed, I thought, was unique where... I'd never seen Porsche ever do that compare their newest, like even a, a mid-grade model where they're like, okay, this is a 992. It's not a completely different. It's a refresh, but this is the the outgoing and we're going to put them right next to each other and then run, like basically run them next to each other so you can visually see the difference. Like, I just thought that was kind of wonky. Yeah. No, I mean, that does make you think like how much do they trust their product? If yeah. it's going to be good, it's going to be good. Why would I need to go? What's the difference? I mean, yeah. maybe it's easier for somebody to grasp a zero to sixty time than a lap time. Like I, I thought I forgot. I, I got like Dodge vibes from that. <laughs> you know, yeah. like this is the new Charger. Well, this is the Hellcat Charger, and it's the it's got sixty more horsepower, uh, like seventeen keys. Yeah, you know, like one of those things. I almost kind of felt it was like that vibe, and it was like, dude, is this? I feel like their marketing team's like asleep at the wheel. Like really? Like this is what this is what you think people want? Like, they want to see this? I don't know about that, man. Um, but maybe there is a whole slew of market people who fell in love with that and thought that was the cat's pajamas. I don't really know. But um, I thought it was strange. I thought it was, um, I guess, the best way to describe 
that launch was uh, underwhelming. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's weird. It was a little Apple event esque on how they were presenting. Um, and then, yeah, just a little bit of oddities here and there. Uh, but they could have dive, dove more into the yeah. like, everything. Like, this is brand new. Yeah. And I it, feel like it, they just it, highlighted it, it just to make some media buzz, and that's it. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like they're not, like, in love with it. Yeah, maybe not. You know, it's almost like, hey, Mark, you're doing a presentation today. You're like, dude, do I have to? They're like, it's your turn, man. It's like, fine. You know I hate this thing. I'm not... It's going to come through in my body language. They're like, I don't care. It's your turn to do the presentation. So today we got a new uh, 992 hybrid. Uh, yeah, it's a good product. I'm just going to bring the guy in who actually developed it because I don't know anything about this thing because I'm stuck in the past. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy comes out. He's like, all right, yeah, it's got a 60 more horsepower. You know, I always thought like they tap danced around this, I thought, which was pretty unique. And I'm not surprised by it, but... um. You know, the journalist that was at the female was asking the questions. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, so it did gain some weight. He's like, yeah, but not that much. And it did gain power. And it's like, all right, so. Well, they said it's lighter. Yeah. Like 50 pounds. But I'm like, okay, like, let's talk about, like, what does it weigh? (laughs) You know, they know they didn't say it. Like, um, usually they always, like, are very, like, excited to talk about weight. I don't think they're excited about what that thing actually weighs. I think they they released it at. No, I know they did eventually. It's not like they they can't keep that secret forever. But I just thought that they didn't even touch on it on their launch. Yeah, you know. I think they said it like the very, 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 very end. They might did have they? mentioned yeah, it was like thirty four hundred pounds. Okay, what it ended up being. Yeah, I guess that's not too bad. They got bigger rear tires, three fifteen. Yeah, I now, saw. I, so I heard them talk about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I didn't feel excited, and I thought I was going to be more excited about it. I thought so too. I thought I was going to be kind of excited to you know. Oh, hey, cool. Like, what? Tell me about this. He's like, yeah, it's got some active aero. Yeah. Hybrid system's kind of (laughs) cool. Yeah, that's kind of like what they're like. This is the new 992.2. Have fun. (laughs) Well, I mean, I wouldn't expect it so much. Like, I expected 100 horsepower of that because that's what Vaughn and I think was talking about or something more than that. Like, it was a pretty crazy number. Well, I think that. I think they're holding it back. But so I mean that's I mean clearly that system can make a lot of yeah. power. I think they're holding it back. I think I mean but, this is part I mean, of their rollout, man. Even with a turbo, and they're going to be probably seven, eight hundred horsepower, seven something. That's such a giant gap between a GTS and a turbo. Yeah, maybe that's the president they want to set. Yes, yeah. maybe or you can get a GTS, or you can get this bad boy's got. I think they're trying to do that. And start I think trying they're to make trying the turbo to make it flagship again. Yes, I think they are. I mean, they did certainly did by pricing on the Turbo S the last time around. I mean, did you see what the pricing was for this? Because oh, that's what I saw a bunch of comments around. I didn't the, really see expensive. it. Um, I didn't really see it. Um, uh, again, I was I was so wowed <laughs> yeah. by the like, presentation. Yeah. It yeah. really inspired me to get on the internet and actually do a lot of research about it because yeah. I was like, man. You know, this guy and this gal did a phenomenal job about talking about this thing. I, I, I just want to get on the internet and actually just read about this for the next six hours because it sounds so interesting. It's so interesting. Um, how do you feel about the design change as far as that front bumper? Like it looks like almost kind of lattice work in the front. <laughs> like, but I think ABS. it looks more. I think it looks more rounded in the front. I kind of like. Yeah, it looks a little different. Yeah, I, don't, I mean. The lattice work is the the arrow. I no, know, I know, I know end. what it is. I'm just saying, how do you feel about it visually when you look at it? I'd have to see it in person to know if I really, really like it. Oh, that is a price. <laughs> I just saw 166 grand for that GTS. Yeah, man, that is strong money, dude. All right, here's our model pricing. Oh no, way more than that. <laughs> Wait. Uh, okay, so yeah, one sixty six for the GTS. Before options. Before options, yes. So you could be deep into the two bills before you. Does include it. destination though. Oh, okay. Um, and then the turbos are floating around two hundred. That sounds about right. Two forty five. Did anything in your mind when this kind of like went 
and I know your mind's probably been thinking about it even before the presentation, but it did it bring it to the surface again, maybe to like refresh yourself because this thing has kind of been anticipated in a way. We've watched a lot of spy shots. We've talked about it a lot. Um, you know, we've we speculated on engine uh, horsepower numbers, how the engine layout configuration, all of this stuff. We speculated all about all this stuff. Um, are you surprised? You know how they did the visual like you see the architecture do you think the system's pretty complex i know we talked about this before but i kind of want to do a little bit of a deep dive where it's like hey well this system was you know on the endurance cars or whatever but you know that's maybe specifically the hybrid system might yeah. not be a failure point but what about like you said what about that electric the motor C-turbo. that's yeah the that's work turbo is weird yeah and then how all of those things work together on a streetcar is that going to be you know we think about a harsh environment like okay it's the racetrack it's like running let's just say an eight hour race or a 12 hour race or whatever right it's like oh man that's really harsh conditions it is but they never shut the car off but never they don't run any of those type of products except for but my well my point is is that the heating and cooling it's never really in the elements of like oh okay hey i went out of town for seven days and i really heated up the you know, like oh, maybe that motor sees yeah, like I'm talking about. Yeah. And, want, yeah. and I know Porsche is great at R&D. I'm just talking about the street consumer. Just anybody who's out there is like, you know, hey, what about these things? What about these certain elements? What about this? And I know they battle test stuff. That's but, millions of miles. But in your mind, do you think there's some there's got to be some weak points in there, one, right? Man. This is a Gen 1 of this type of scenario. Yeah. It's always going to be something. That there's got to be some weak points in there, right? That it's like done millions on it. I, I just. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. If it's not a performance system. Yeah, where they kind of like the board and the bean counters are like, hey, we shouldn't use plastic fittings here. It's probably going to melt like the 996. Yeah. And everybody had to do the retrofit, remember? Nine. Glue is better now. <laughs> we'll use this same same setup. No problem. I, I'm just interested to see where they go from here. And if they really, it sounds almost like from this presentation, they don't, they don't care about the 911. That's that's almost. I kind of got that vibe too. Now that you said that, I didn't like, even think about that until you just said they that. They don't care. Yeah. They didn't put any time. How many presentations have we seen with the Macan that was in Singapore and had so many yeah. millions of dollars probably put in that presentation? Yeah. And this was like, man, there's a dot too. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that, but you're absolutely right. Where they're kind of like almost, they're almost downplaying ice stuff, yeah. even though it's not really fully ice. Yeah, and um, I guess this is a perfect time to segue into what I was going to... This is a perfect attachment to this. Porsche stock drops by 36% in Q1. So EV sales are through the floor, meaning like no one's buying them, and they don't see anybody buying them. Um, And do you think... There's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Remember, they were talking about, oh, the, the Macan EV, we're taking orders nonstop, all this stuff, all this. Like, is that just, is that lip service for the board, you think? Even though we're getting it publicly, is that like a, 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 a public presentation of, we're not struggling because these numbers, ever, like I was diving in, um, they actually, their sales are, are really bad right now. And, and this is the first time in a very long time Porsche's been in this kind of a like law yeah. like after Q1. I mean like they've been rocking for like fucking decade and a half nonstop like overproducing like nonstop like delivering above the number all the time. And this is like the first time in a long time where it's like, "Oh my god, we laid an egg." Well, like and not I mean, like a little one, like a big one. We do have cycles and we're seeing the 90s close come back so maybe yeah. we're in that 90 cycle. I mean, it's just a weird it's a weird time for automakers um, mm-hmm. trying to trying to figure these waters out with the EV brands and thought something was hot and then now it's kind of yeah it's a do you think device, that presentation uh, in the wake of this announcement uh, had yeah. anything to do with like do you think all of a sudden like the budgets were just clawed back on everything like and you get 15 minutes and go. yeah they were like we were gonna do a million dollar thing yeah. and they was like uh, we're gonna do a hundred and fifty thousand dollar thing is what we're gonna do um, did you think they just pulled the reins back? Hey, maybe that guy was going to lose his job after this thing. He just like maybe they sent him in there anyways, almost kind of like <laughs> the last hurrah. Yeah. So um, explain to us, uh, Dieselgate. He's like, I thought we were done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetically, 
And he's like, what if we are, are we on, embarking on a second diesel gate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I mean, major, major drops. Um, Want to tie in that the was it the EV release wasn't the very was EV sales the driver absolutely one hundred percent it was EV sales were so were do you just think terrible. Scared? Do you think I mean if you're in Porsche series are you scared to launch a like uh, I mean the Cayman and Boxer now? No, I, they, they're they're probably they're not pass they're not being passive about it. They're probably being aggressive about it. They're probably like we need to get these out here now because these are going to bring our EV in. like they think they're. Yeah. I mean, I would be positive about it. They're probably like, hey, these are going to bring the numbers up. Let's get these things out here. Like, people are tired of the Taycan. Like, let's, we need to get them some more stuff. Um, another thing, clearly, um, we know how this is going to work out, right? Mothership's going to come down to dealerships and says, hey, those cars are made. You better figure out a way to sell them, a.k.a. promise allocations or air quotes, not promise allocations, and say, hey, if you buy a certain amount of cars, we may be able to do you a favor. Yeah, and list. then yeah. you never said you actually d- were going to give them an allocation. So then you put yourself in a good position because then you can say, hey, I didn't actually say you were going to get an allocation. I just said you would put yourself in a favorable position, which yeah. isn't inaccurate. They are oh. more favorable to that dealership than somebody else who hadn't bought three or four Taycans, right? Yeah. Or oh. Macan EVs Lying. and everything else that comes along. Um, why don't they just cut the crap, dude? Like, just give the people what they want, right? Like, hey, if everybody wants a 3RS, dude, just sell them. I like, you need the I, money, dude. Just make it happen. Yeah, I definitely think our our, uh, our plan for them to be back in the black is just release everything. No numbers. Yeah. No constriction. Just they need to go old school Ferrari. Like, Ferrari never kept track. They're like, we don't keep track of stupid shit like that. And then people are like, that sounds crazy, but don't bite the Ferrari hand because we might not get to buy a Ferrari. Like, that's how they, they're like, what'd you say? You're like, I didn't say anything. He said something. I didn't say anything. My you're like, telling. okay, right. well, you warn him. You know, like one of those kind of things. It's like, don't talk back. Please yourselves, thanks. Yeah. And it's like, you know, hey, Enzo, how many F40s did you make? Who fucking said that? <laughs> <laughs> A lot. Kill that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Mark was never seen again. Exactly. <laughs> that guy will never get to buy a Ferrari again. You know why? Because he's not even a real Ferrari guy. Just like, like They just need to go tyrant mode on everybody. Just be like, hey, how many of the 3RS did you make? Who said that? <laughs> Execute him immediately on the spot. Immediately on the blacklist, gets his ID. Like, yeah. Walk into it's like, see what happens? See what happens when you talk back? I'm bringing old school Germany back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little too far, right? <laughs> I mean, depending on how old. <laughs> so it's a, depending on the far backness of that. So. No, but uh, yeah, they're struggling right now in Q1. Will they bounce back? Of course they will, right? How can you not bounce back from a 36% loss? <laughs> you would think you would be able that to, right? Something. Um, I think it's, it's one of those things, I think, in a long time uh, that... So anybody who actually bought some of that IPO, I'm sorry because it that's that's the loss off that top. I'm sure. Like, remember, I think you and I were even speaking. We're like, this, this you can't lose. They like print money. And now you can. So, the ship has been steered into the rocks. Announcer's curse. And EVs were on that ship, and it is crashing on shore because nobody wants those things. It's like, huh? How can we ship all of the EVs over? on the most unstable boats that just barely passed inspection that could possibly sink, and then we could just write all of these off. That would be an inside move, wouldn't it? Be like, they should make their own boats. They should so, have Porsche EV boats. <laughs> it just... <laughs> like, this is a six boat in the month that's actually hit Oops. the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. And got to say, Bob, I pulled the weather reports... Sunny skies and uh, one to two foot waves. What happened here? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that's fraudulent insurance. <laughs> I'm coming from a place of curious. I'm not accusing anybody of anything here. <laughs> but oh, say man. these boats didn't yeah. by accident. Wouldn't say I was missing them. 
Um, yeah, so let's wrap that up. 992.2, it seemed pretty uneventful. Um, seems kind of a shame. You hit the nail on the head. Didn't even think about that. Uh, didn't put a lot of thought into it. But now that that uh, thought will probably haunt me for a little bit because I'm actually going to be a little nervous about that because if they weren't excited about their own product, how is anybody else going to be excited about it, right? Um, so sales may suffer. Who knows? I, I think there's probably always going to be people buying these. There's always those loyalty like, hey, I got to have the new shiny, whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Put me on the list. You know me, man. I'm the loyal customer, brother. Call me and take yeah, my money. Some leases going take on. my money, brother. Um, one of those kind of guys. He's like, yeah, you're looking at a 992.2 right there. That is a hybrid system in that one, now. Huh? <laughs> I can just see it now. Did you um, did you see the thing with the um, duck from Switch Cars? That, that, yeah, the, the Porsche. That was show? so yeah. funny. Yeah, he done. He did good with that man. Um, My positive news though, racing, right? So. Yeah, right. So let's talk about this. Dempsey and Long racing together. It looks like Clayman Club Sport, right? Um, yeah. In the Pirelli World Challenge, uh, I think they took second. Or I says, yeah, they're second in their class. Yeah. Um, good for them. Uh, looks like uh, Dempsey's wife has green lighted him for racing again. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, although unless double the pads, you know, he's like, babe, that wasn't me. Yeah. Uh, like, like one of well, those I, I wonder if this is like, like that is a deep fake. Intense. That is a deep fake, babe. I did not. I told you I had an acting gig. That totally is not me. I'm gonna call Porsche. They're they're misusing my name. <laughs> I'm acting. This is a, too far. Yeah, I'm gonna a, handle this. I'll be right back. <laughs> He's acting as a racing driver, so it doesn't count. <laughs> it's like, babe, there were cameras there. We're filming a movie. We're filming a movie. She's like, oh, okay. No, but happy for them. Good for them. I knew, I knew Patrick couldn't stay retired for long. Oh, so I just started there. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised it's just a weird, like, off series that they're, I mean, it's a cup series. Well, let's be real. They're buds. So one Patrick is helping another Patrick basically knock the dust off is what's happening. <laughs> That's kind of what the announcers were saying <laughs> without too many words. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, the other Patrick wants to get back into racing. The other Patrick stop, just stopped racing but yeah. probably still misses it. Um, the other Patrick co-owns a race team. Um, so... Helps probably wants to do Le Mans again at some point, I would assume. And, and this is probably the beginning of his journey to kind of get his wits about him again and, and probably try to get himself into a car. Yeah, if they do a, they do a series like they did Fassbender, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Probably not, though. I mean, like, I don't... I mean, Dempsey wouldn't be... I mean, obviously, he's an actor. I mean, he'd probably be great for it, but I just... I don't know if they're going to, like, replicate it that way. Like, I don't... I don't see Patrick taking, the, like... He's raced cars before. I think it's going to be a totally different journey than Michael took. Well, like it's, I feel like it's made me move a lot more chill. Like yeah. They're doing it, and they're still racing, but it's not like we're going to be yeah. going pro. Cause. Yeah. Like, I mean, he has raced pro yeah. already, like Dempsey has. Yeah. Like, he, I'm sure, just, you know, get it relaminated, pro cars ready to go. Anyways, but the point is, is you know, he could be the, the gentleman driver, and he's going to probably – put together a team and they will probably as we talked about before porsche is going more and more to this they want customer racing right so whether he ends up in the prototype car or he ends up in the gt3r i would imagine in a, in a 24 month span i wouldn't be shocked to see patrick long and dempsey maybe running on a team together and a couple other current pro guys that they have on loan from Porsche running a prototype car at Le Mans. Yeah, that's all I'd say too. 96 would be cool. Yeah, so I, I see them doing that. Um, they're not going to run, I mean, they'll probably run the WEC series. They're not going to run every race around the globe because that's expensive. Like, they're, they're going to run a privateer's team races. He's going to hit the highlight re reel of what he wants to race mm. and try to win and podium at those tracks, right? Probably make some of the major, like probably Sebring, yeah. probably Le Mans. And Rolex. You know, Rolex. Yeah, the Come big on ones, down. you know. And just be like, hey, man, those are the only ones I'm focused on. 
You know, I'm going to try to get my Steve McQueen on, bro. Like, yeah. that's that's what I want to do. Got the triple crown. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, racing's in him. Obviously, he's he stayed with racing from a, a principal type of state. Like, and he was not even a principal. He's just co-owner. Like, yeah. it's just, like, put it that way. He's not in there giving guidance. Um, yeah, he's always liked racing. I mean, he raced with Brumos, like, and with Patrick. So. Yeah, I can see that. Um. You know, like helping Jan raced with him. Jan Halen yeah. right, right, was a teammate of his. You know, like it, it was it, hard to find the race. I can tell you that. I was like looking for it. It's like it's some sub series. Yeah. Of, uh, of oh, the you mean North the one they're currently doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I think that's the one old Jason Bell was running in at mm-hmm. some point. No, no, it was Amazon. This one's a straight Porsche North America. Oh, strictly Porsche, I think. Um, okay. They and they were at Coda, right? Two different classes. Yeah. They have a uh, the. GT3 class and then the GT4 RS. And who knows? We may be we may be shooting for the moon for them on this, and maybe he just wants to do some of this. Maybe they just want to race. Yeah, that's that's, this was the maybe he just wants to just do stuff like this to get his his juices going. Maybe he doesn't have aspirations of oh, I want to win Le Mans myself. I've you know maybe he's just kind of like hey, I'm cool. I just want to get my you know get my bearings about me. I want to get out there and mix it up. I want to sweat a little bit. You know, one of those kind of deals. Hurley Awood out there, Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> He's got the, all, got the all-star team out there, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't watch that race, but Hurley was there? No. I was, I was oh, saying, okay. I was, I was making, making oh, that, that would have been cool. The if, 963 team. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> that would be awesome. If Don Leatherwood. Like, is out the there lead, like, lead mechanic, crew chief, lead crew chief. He's like, oh, man, you really de- <laughs> went deep in the bag on this one. <laughs> Brumos colors. There we go. So let's do a quick ruckus recap. So basically 70 cars. Want a big shout out to Charles Stanley for putting on that event. He always does such a good event um, to his wife and daughter for helping and everybody that came out there and that I hung out with. Um, always such a good group of people. Like Charles does such a good job of not letting a lot of dipshits in there. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always one or two, you know, and, and then they eventually get weeded out or you know, move on or, you know, attrition, who knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, great event. I mean, I just, that part of Virginia that he, we set up oh, and yeah, we it's run, good. it's, it is, it's great. Um, we, we had some rain um, that we had to drive around here or there. Um, we had a couple, I think day one, it was kind of a wettish on and off day. Like there were moments of dryness and then moments of where it was kind of wet, but we were able to stay out of it quite a bit and then day two we were actually supposed to get washed out completely yeah. and you know by god's hand came in and yeah, no nope. no rain nice. and like you know and, and there was rain in the area but i think our routes took us away from it um you know almost like charles planned that of course yeah. he did it just but like orchestrated the weather yeah he's hold like, on a second boys made a f- quick phone call said hey big guy let's uh let's move this around you're gonna make me look let's bad that up yeah. Gonna make me look bad. But Did you, uh, didn't you get there early? How was that? It was good. Um, we got there. I got to Georgia a day or two early. Kevin went with me. Um, we were gonna go run, but actually it did rain in Georgia a little bit. So then that kind of was out. But we, you know, we got to hang out and just spend some time together, which is nice. Like that's part of that journey. Um, yeah. Spending some bro time well, and hanging also out. Also, a pretty good haul from here to. Yeah, it it, it oh, is, yeah. man. It is a it's an event to come all the way down from here. Um, one of the guys uh, that I met there, super cool dude. He's in, he came from San Antonio and drove all the way up. So like, man, he's, he was a trooper and I think he's going to be at roof Los in a couple weeks and a couple of the, you know, a handful of those guys yeah. from that rally are going to go do that rally. Um, I'd like to do some of those, but I just, we're so far down here in the state. <laughs> like it, yes. I mean, it's, it's rough. Like doing, you know, I, I'm not saying I don't enjoy the event, but I'm saying it takes a toll on you going up, spending the time, you know, getting your car right, making the trip, and then coming all the way back, and then kind of like getting back in the swing of like work. You almost yeah. kind of feel like a zombie. Like, I mean, it took because me. Because your adrenaline's up for so many days. Yeah. And you're down. It was. was. Like, I mean, dude, I slept for like 10 hours, like three nights in a row. And then, like, finally, I was, like, normal again. I was like, okay, I'm, I feel clear-headed, you know? Yep. It's, like, almost kind of felt like, you know, and it's hard driving, too. I mean, that's part of it. Like you said, your, your adrenaline's up the whole time. You're, 
you know, what's that? Uh, the old saying, right? The tattoo or the sticker. It's like, don't die. You know, yeah. like one of those kind of things. Like, don't die, dude. Um, but yeah, it Is was. There a, any cool cars up there you didn't expect? Anything weird, crazy? Um, I saw. Yeah, I mean, Sean's car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew Sean's car, but I. From the outside, that's what's great about Sean's car, and I won't I won't share his secrets, obviously mm. on the on on the public, you know thing. But the car is stout, yeah. um, it's total total mountain beast, um, and because of him, I I'm going to be spending Changes, some money, changing it up, yeah, like spending some money, yeah. um, in a good way though. I, it's something I've wanted to do, but then he solidified it for me, so it's kind of one of those things. It's like, all right, thanks, Sean cost me like six grand but that's fine um but yeah i mean his car is a powerhouse and uh you know there was just a lot of good cars i mean todd's car is a powerhouse there's a lot of them that are just like really stout cars and um you know a lot of guys i don't want to say a lot of guys a few guys g body guys that were there have made the transition over to three six mm. uh, like doing three six motor yeah. swaps um a lot of them have come out of nine nine threes um so those cars are quick now. Everybody's kind of leveling up. Um, there's a lot of guys who went from 3.2 to 3.4, did short stroke kits. Um, there were several cars there that were very fresh engine builds, not like overall builds, meaning like yeah. the whole car was built. Um, there was a few of those, but most of them were kind of like, oh, hey, motor's being broken in. Motor's being broken. Like probably three or four or five guys there. And like in a group of 70, that's actually quite a few. Yeah. Like new motors, like brand new builds. Um, a lot of the same shops or just different people? Uh, a couple almost. different folks all over kind of the all East Coast, like, oh, yeah. you know, but all a couple different shops doing stuff. And um, yeah, just great running into everybody. And, you know, some people couldn't stay both days. Some people had prior obligations. So that I get that too. And um, always a good crew. Um, Roanoke's always like kind of a cool city. Like it's kind of a small city, but it's an old city. So. Um, and for us going back there, I think this is year four now we've been to all of them. Like some of the guys, um, like being the elder statesman and some of the ones that have been to every single one of them. It's one of those things where it's kind of like, it's comfortable cause you know it like meaning yeah. like, you know, the hotel, like, you know, like the good eat spots. Um, so there's comfort in that. And then there's like, there's comfort in you're going to run some of those roads that you recognize, but you're also going to run new roads because Charles is really good about mixing it up. He doesn't just like, Oh, exact same roads as last year. You know, there's a little bit of variation. And even if it's a variation to the sequence of the roads, meaning like that can be enough to change your perspective, you know, meaning like, man, you ran like a bunch of hard roads in the morning and then kind of chilled in the afternoon. Like, okay, well we're going to run the hard roads in the afternoon and maybe some chill roads in the morning. So just even that switch up, the sequence of you doing the roads is enough to kind of like, you know, shock your system essentially. Um, yeah, but he always does a great event and um, always so glad to go to those things. And I'm sure Kevin, you know, he met a lot of new people and, you know, he's met a lot of new, you know, contacts and things like that there for him. And it's always great to see somebody that, you know, you're friends with, um, come to one of those things especially for the first time and it's like dude you know a lot of these guys even though you don't know them you know because yeah. you know them from like social or you know yeah. them from stuff like that and it's kind of like and then you get to Make see him connect, yeah you, know. you get to see he's like oh man i do know you and you know oh hey you know and even every year i go there even we've been to all of them i'm still meeting like i said there's probably th was 30 35 new faces there that were there yeah. you know and didn't get to meet them all, but the ones I did meet, they were very cool people, you know? And, and like I said, fortunately for us, when we host our rally, we have the same kind of vibe where it's one of those, like where you kind of know each other, like everybody knows each other, yeah. checks in with each other. And I, I kind of, you know, I wasn't in a fraternity, but obviously in, being in the military, that camaraderie, like you understand it, mm. you know, you know, being playing sports as a younger kid, it's, it's kind of one of those vibes, like, cause all the, everybody kind of lives all over the place. And just like anything, like the tight knit people you're with, you talk to on a regular basis. But those are people on that outer circle mm -hmm. where you're still friends with and you enjoy spending time with them. But, you know, you only get to see them once or twice or maybe three times max a year. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those events you get to see like, oh, man, hey, 
have you have you been? I haven't. You know, I didn't go to Targa. How was Targa? Oh man, how's your kids? How's your wife? How's it? How's everything with you? How's your car? What'd you do? Like, it's just a big catch up event. So I think it's just kind of cool in the timeline of just. I don't know, face-to-face check-in with people, you know, where it's just kind of like more meaningful. It's like, hey, man, we're going to have a great weekend. Hey, let's go get a bourbon. Let's go hang out. Cool. Hey, just check up. It's like, oh, man, hey, you're on some different shit now. I'm not cool with that. Like, you know, like, you know, whatever. You know what it is? You know, like, you know what I'm saying. But, um, yeah, it was great, and it always is great. And um, I think our rally this year there's going to be a week between, I think, Targa's mm. before, Man. week off. So at least I get to a week off and I don't have to go back to back. Because I told Charles, I was like, I missed it last year uh, because of rent sport. Yeah. That was understandable. A lot of people did. And then the year before that, we had the hurricane. Oh, and I true. didn't go. And you're like, well. Yeah. Then, yeah. And I actually, and I should have went because nothing really happened here. Yeah. You know. Um, but you don't know. But you don't know. Exactly. Right. Like, had I gone, who knows? Something yeah. could have happened. Whatever. Um but yeah, we were projected to get really bad, <laughs> get it really bad, and we did it. But you know, they and I checked in with everybody, of course, like from two years ago when they were there. Well, they had, it was perfect, bro. Yep, exactly. So chill out that, there. That that hurricane must have blew everything out. Actually, it was like fifty five degrees and Might sunny. Pretty much best. I think they, ever. dude. I think they heat they heated the roads up, or something. They actually had like a truck warmer out there that went out there and like warmed the roads up for us. Like it was insane, dude. Like there was nobody out there. Like, you know, like one of those things. Yeah. You missed the most epic one. It's like Should've okay, cool, dude. <laughs> you know. I'll remember to say that to you when you miss the next one. <laughs> Do you miss the best one? <laughs> say it anyways, exactly. Like, really? What was so great? Everything. Everything was different, man. Not one thing was yeah. terrible. Everything was great. Everything. From check in to leaving, everything. No, um, yeah, always a great event. Um, always so honored to be able to to attend those events because you know it's a you know how those air cool guys. It's a tight knit group. You know, it's like one of those things where it's kind of like, well, it's first come first serve, and I got this distro list, and these are the people I think that you know add value to my rally, and we'll see who comes. You know, so it's always kind of one of those mysteries. But uh, yeah, great event. Uh, you ready to take a break? I am. All Let's right. Hey, for the money payers, you're getting the juice on the backside because I am yeah. going to talk about Sean's car a little bit yeah. in secrecy and tell you what I'm going to be doing to my car. So yep. for everybody who's on the budget, hey, I feel you, but the mystery is going to be out there. Patreon.com forward slash big car talk. Yep. You'll find it. Do it right there. <laughs> So we are on the backside. Thank you guys so much. You guys literally are the backbone. I know I say that all the time, but you really are, and I mean that. That's, um, a, that's a military term for a, for a lot of us. Or yeah, that's right. Something ingrained Tip of the spear. Oh, man, the backbone of the air. You're a trailblazer. Like all of those. Yeah, right. Um, but in all seriousness, I, we really, really do thank you guys. And, uh, I hope you appreciate the second half of the show that we've tried to do this. Aaron, you are sending those hats out at some point, right? Uh, at the end of the month. Okay. So like, um, you got, so like tomorrow, t- tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Like We're get in three days. And, uh, send all the hats out. Yeah, yeah. Like essentially in three days, is that going to be a drop ship thing or we are going to have to mail those out? No, drop ship. It. Okay. I mean, I've debated. Okay. I'll probably drop to it. We don't need to top shop for that for the listeners. Um, so some are slowing things down, right? So what that means is obviously events, rallies kind of chill off in the summer and then they pick back up at September time frame. If you're not familiar with that rhythm, that's pretty like the only thing that's really happened is like IMSA racing and auto racing, but they're all over the you know the US. Obviously yeah. Lamas coming Lamar's up. Lamas coming up in June, yeah. Yeah. So that's the big one. Hey, it's Aaron, and I want to just thank you for listening to the podcast. There's actually more of the podcast. We do a whole other half, if not more, depending on what the topics are, over on patreon.com forward slash speak our talk. Join the club, hear more of the podcast, be entered for the giveaways, be entered to get in the drive. There's a lot more that comes with it. So, again, if you want to support even more than you do, you can. Go to the website, like I mentioned, patreon.com forward slash talk, and you'll be on your way. Thank you.